Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to recruit experienced painters to paint along with me. And I'm, I'm really glad to be here today. Um, we're gonna be doing the last part of our chickadee. And um, if you get the chickadees done and you decide, no, you know, I really think I want to fire it and then do the final um, background and things, you can do that. That's strictly up to you. So however you prefer to do it. Um, we're going to be working on the branches of the pine tree first. And again, I brought in one of the pine trees from my yard. And you can see all these little tickies here. Um, those we're going to be doing on the branch. And this way you kind of have a refresher as to why we're doing it. <laughs> okay, so let me just tilt you down. So this is the chickadee plate so far. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our liner. And um, we're going to take, I think, like an autumn green. Now, the autumn green is, is like a dark, dark brown green. And you may not have uh, anything like it, so you may have to use black green or dark green. And you're just going to go in and you're going to go down near the base where you see the branch, the needles attaching to the branch. And you're just going to put a little bit of depth in there, just a tad. If you get too much, don't worry. The nice thing is you will be able to um, take your pico pay and pull it out if, if you think you need to. So let's see right in there, just to give you a little depth. And we're going to do that up here. And if you pull it towards yourself, sometimes you get a better result. There we go. And we're also going to do it on this one here. And we're going to do it back here behind the pine cone. Can you see how it adds the depth? It really does make a difference. You're kind of attaching it. And behind the pine cone, uh, you may even want to add a little more depth. Uh, we're going to go in and we're going to be doing the um, dark yellow brown. I have a yellow brown too. That's actually the darkest yellow brown you can get. And... <clears throat> We're just going to do an interrupted line. Let me really come close so you can see. We're going to do an interrupted line of that color. Let me get a little more color here. Wiggle your brush around in the paint and then just do an, an, un, do an interrupted line. You, do, you don't want it to be, you saw how rough those branches are. You don't want it to be too... You don't want it to be too smooth. You want it to be rough. And you want it to be a deep color so that it really shows up, and looks nice. You want to paint towards yourself. So here we go, here, 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 here. Okay, and I'm gonna clean my brush. I use mineral spirits to clean it. Go into my oil, and now I'm going into my rich brown, which is the darker brown. And you're going to kind of dance around on this. Just dance around a little bit, pulling these little specks. You see how I'm doing that? I'm jumping around here a little bit, but... You want to get those little specks going there. And that will help you, I think, with the texture on those branches. Really make it look pretty and look more authentic. If you have a few little 
a few of those little flicks out to the side. Just try to stay on the top of your brush, the tip of your brush, especially if you have a long liner like I do. Um, that'll make it a little easier to apply the color and really get it to flow. Okay. And I'm pretty pleased with that. Don't know about you guys, but uh, I really like the way it turned out. It it's, get, gives you the real feel of those branches that we had. So now we've let the green set up a little bit. We're going to look and see if there are any places where it's overly dark with the green. And if there are, we're going to just go in and got a little bit of dust on there. We're going to go in and just pull the color out. So let me do it this way so you can see. That way you can lighten it a little but still keep that depth in there. And up here too. That you could really tell the difference, I think. And we missed one of these. So let me go back down here and clean up the brush and add more dark to it. So I did the the green, um, the dark green in here. And I think I want to add just a little more dark green right here so that it attaches. So anywhere you see that you think you need a little dark green, you can add it just to give you that depth. Okay. Then I'm going to take my little rounded brush. I really like these little rounded brushes. They're uh, called a rounded quill. I have a real narrow one. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to go back in and fix this um, pine cone because it, it didn't do as well as I would have liked it to have done. Um, uh, on the first fire, I think it's because when you do that, um, sometimes you have all that line drawing if you trace your pattern on, and um, it makes it a little difficult to actually get the the pine cone just the way you want it to be. So I'm adding that in, and now I'm going to go and add the. So I put the the yellow brown and I used the yellow brown too on there and I just sort of speckled it. I'm going back and I'm also going to speckle it with the rich brown now to give it a, a, de a depth. I can see where previously I had the little pine cone half moons so I'm just reinforcing those a little bit. Then I'm going to turn it upside down and wipe a few this direction from the bottom there. Okay. And now that I've got all that done, I'm going to take my Pico Pay. And I'm just going to wipe out those little half moons that really make it look like a pine cone. And down here, you're going to put a few little lines in and um, maybe even give it a, a little center section here. So as you do them down at the bottom, the, the little pine cones are a little bit longer. Okay. Now, I want to get to the birds, so I'm going to try to just move along on this. But you can play with this all you want and really get it so it looks more like a pine cone. I'm pretty happy with that, though. I think it looks pretty decent, so I'm, I'm going to leave that. And we're going to go on to the birds. So now with the birds, you start with the eye. 
because the eye is really one of the more important parts. And right now you can see our little eyes there are more white dots than they are anything else. I'm going to take some black. I'm going to have to set this down because working on the eyes can be very delicate. Well, maybe I can hold it. Let me see. I'm going to wind the black around so that I have a nice point on my uh, liner. And in fact, you know what? I'm not going to even use the liner. I'm going to use my detail brush. My detail brush is so tiny, it only has like two hairs on it. And I'm going to do that in the black. And then that way I have less chance of missing the mark and really getting what I want. So let me bring it really up to you. You're going to put the black on. And as you go around, you're going to try to make that bird really look at you. Okay, you may have to put a little dot in the middle. You may have to add a little more black to the edge. But really take a look at that bird and decide what it's going to take to make him really look at you. So now we're going to, um, we're going to work a little bit on the hood and the little, this is the hood. And this is the little, I don't know what you call that, the beard. <laughs> um, and what you're going to do is you're going to take a brush. It can be a liner. I prefer this little rounded brush that I have. And I'm just going to dip it in my black. And I'm going to gently pull from the center out. But I'm going to leave a little bit of that blue there that I have because I really want that blue to be a little bit of a highlight. And in fact, if I wipe out too much, I might just go back and put some blue in. So I'm doing from the center out on here. And this brush really has a nice point on it. And then I'm doing from the center out back here. Okay. I'm going to take my detail brush, forgot about the beaks here, and I'm going to spend a little time going through the beaks. Reinforcing that beak. The beak should be light on top. And a little bit darker on the bottom. Okay. So that kind of gives you an idea. Now, let's go back and we're going to use the black again. And we're going to do the little, the little throat, the little beard here on this animal. And you're just going to give it more color, that's all. Try to keep it smooth. Turn the plate if you need to. Oh, am I painting up so you can see? Right here. Okay, and over on this one, it doesn't, see, it doesn't need too much on this one here. So I'm just going to do a little bit to even out the color, and that's it. Then I'm going to go back in, because I did take uh, some of the, um, I did take some of the blue off the top, and I let, these, the, now there are a ton of cardinals. Uh, cardinals, chickadees. And a lot of the chickadees have different colors. Some have brown, some have blue. It just depends. The particular ones that I'm interested in have a little bit of a blue cast to them. So I'm taking my dark blue and I'm just doing the hood right up here and right there. I'm just going to do it with a little bit of the dark blue just to put the color back in. Or you can use Copenhagen if you think that's a better a better color. Use the side of your brush, just wipe it in. Okay. All right. Now, they have these little tickies on them. You see these here and here? Those were blue. Um, this one seems to be pretty prominent, but this one over here seems to have washed out. 
So I'm just taking my detail brush and doing a couple of little quick things there. So now we're going to get into their little breasts. And um, I still like to use my, where is it here? My quarter inch brush. I'm going to use my silver gray. And we're going to do just like we did the last time, pretty much. We're just going to come down and accent the color on the breast so it's a good color. You can see the yellow is pretty bright. I don't need to redo the yellow. But over here on this bird, I think I really do need to redo the, the silver gray. So I am need a little more there. So now we've got the breasts done. And I've already done this bird down here. It's the reason I'm not doing him. I wanted to save us a little time. Now I'm going to go and put a little more blue on these feathers. They really could use it. And so I'm using my Copenhagen blue and I'm just wiping it in on each of the feathers. Can you, I'm trying to do it so you can see it. Just, in fact, you can almost wipe over the feathers. You just want to get a hint of that blue in there so that it's it's a little more prominent. You can mix it with the silver gray if you want to do their little backs up in here. And now we're into the detail. I use my liner brush. You can use your liner or your detail brush. It just depends which one you're more comfortable with. I'm going to start out and I'm going to do a very interrupted light stroke around the breast. I'm sketching in the breast. I mean, literally sketching. You don't want it to be a heavy stroke. Same thing here to separate these birds. I'm just sketching. Can you see how I'm sketching there? It's just a sketching stroke. There's a little tail down here. I'm just going to put a little more of the color in. Now, you want to connect, I noticed, you want to connect between the, the hood and the little throat right here. Okay, and right here. So that it's a little more connected. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to sketch. You see what I'm doing? I'll get real close for you. And we're going to sketch here. Just enough so that you get some detail and you define the birds and where they are. Okay, and then you're going to take some time and just Put in some of those little feathers. I'm still using my, my liner. Just to separate those little feathers. Oh. Now, if you get it too dark, like I did up there, take a bigger brush. This is my quarter inch. And just push or pull, whatever you need to do, to get it to go back to the size you want it to be. Okay, so now I've just, I've divided my feathers up and I'm pretty much done with this. Um, so if you're happy with it and you've got it done, check a couple of things. Uh, first thing to do is check and make sure that they don't look like they're just out there in midair. I had to add some feet here and there to give them a little more, you know, that they aren't out there. Um, I, I had to, um, I felt like, this bird needed a little bit of a tail. And so uh, I just felt that it was missing. So what I did was I just colored in a little bit of dark behind the two birds so that it kind of suggests a tail because I was like, I just, it looked funny to me. It just didn't look like it was working real well. And so I wanted to make sure it looked, it made sense. The other thing I probably will do here is I will take a little, um, I feel like there needs to be a little more green right here to cover him up so that you can 
because he didn't have feet. Now I'm leaving this bird plate with a white background around the birds. Um, and I'm going to put my name on the back. Let me show you the other plate that I've already done. You know, I normally try one and then do one with you. And this is the plate that I've already done. And this plate, I signed it down here, but unfortunately I signed a kind of whopper jot. You know, I thought it was straight at the time I was holding the plate. And that's another reason why I think I, I'm going to sign this one on the back, the one I'm working on. So let me show you how you get this kind of a finish. Now on this particular plate, let me hold it straight so it's not giving you all this grief. There you go. On this plate, um, I did the same technique that I did, I'm going to show you on my new plate, um, here with a light baby blue or even a cool shadow if you have it. So let me show you how we get this green. Um, it really is a green and how we did the blue. It's very simple. We used a wedge. I used a wedge sponge. You know those stupid makeup sponges that you use every morning? They come in handy for more than that. And what you do is this. And I have to move things over a little so I can show you. I take a super fat brush. I dip it in my oil. I barely wipe it off and I just slap it on my tile. Maybe a couple of times here. Because I want some oil on my tile. Okay, and I set that aside. Now I take my sponge. Okay, let me show you. You're going to take, I'm going to do it with a really dark blue so you can really see it. You just paint, you just sponge around them. And just keep pouncing and pouncing and pouncing. And then you go back and you take a brush and remove any of the color. But if you're careful with these sponges, and that's why it's a light blue, it's really not going to show up. But you don't get it on the white of the bird. If you can work around the bird, like up in here, I'm going to work around the bird this direction. Can you see what I'm doing up there? You have to take your time. I even try to work around. Or you could do it with a brush. You know, the way you normally put background in. I go right over the pine needle. Tamp it out. And you can get, you can get pretty close. Do you see? Does that help? I mean, you can really get pretty close to the bird without hurting the white on the bird because you're paint, you're doing it around them. That was the reason I used the sponge. I felt I had more control with the sponge. Then if you paint over these things, and here, let me just even this out down here. If you paint over these, You come back with a dry sponge, a dry um, brush, and just pull out and keep wiping off the blue color. Now, if you have resist, you can use that. And then you can just feather where you get into the, the background. Um, resist is a red kind of a jelly um, that that you can paint on your um, birds. I had some here. I don't see it right now. But it's a red jelly and you let it dry. It becomes like a film. You use the sponge. You can j then, without thinking about it, go over everything and it won't matter. And then you just lift gently the corner of the resist and pull it back. And anything you put the resist on looks just like it did before. That's another way you can do it. But I have to tell you, actually, I kind of like this. I have to tell you that um, the more you get used to using the little sponge for the background for some things like this, like I really wanted this to be kind of a moody sort of 
uh, background. I didn't want it to be the same background that I have on everything. So now let me show you what I want to do on this plate. I'm, it's such a pretty plate. Can you see the edges? They're really pretty. They're kind of lacy. Um, I'm going to take and dip my sponge in the oil. And then I'm going to my dark green. And I'm going to pounce it in the dark green. And then I'm going to start and pounce it on the edges. Now you go, oh no, what's she doing? You kind of have to leave it down. Because the more you move, the more it moves. But you're using the flat part of the sponge now. And you're doing light pounces right up to the edge. And you might need to get a little more color on there. Now, the other thing I find is when you get all done with this, it helps to take a picture of your plate before you put it in the kiln. And you know why? It's weird, but like with this one, I took a picture. I got it done. I took a picture before I went to put it in the kiln. And the first thing I realized was I had a couple of hairs on it. And I didn't see those hairs because they didn't really show up because of all the texture on the, on the, the rim. But the picture showed it to me, and then I was able to correct it. And sometimes if you take a picture, you'll see other things that you wished you had changed, and you can do it. So now, I haven't put more oil on my brush, I'm uh, brush on my sponge. I'm just going back in, but you see I'm getting these glops? So that's a sign that maybe I need some oil. And you kind of pull, and you kind of tease it, and then you pounce. Don't make it too oily. It will pick up all the dust in the room. What you want to do is keep pouncing and try to avoid it becoming oily. And you're gonna do this all the way around the plate. And if it looks good, I think this is all I'm gonna do on this plate. So I'm going to hold it up so that the white doesn't show anymore. See what it's going to look like? <laughs> I really like that. Now, a couple things. Right here, you can see I went out of the area. I have a, a little Q-tip, and I'm going to just run it around the edge. Pick up some of that, and then if I picked up too much, I can go back and gently tap and add it. This is a little easier than feathering, and the more you play with it, the more even it will become. I also have all this detail work here that you can see. This beautiful lacy look. Um, I was trying to come up with a way that I could actually see more of that, so I took a clean sponge and just pressed it. And you know, these sponges are cheap. You can buy them a million in a bag, so. And by doing that, I've lightened it. Now, you may not like that. I personally decided I didn't like it, and so I went back over it just a little bit, like this. Got it back to what it was, pretty much. Another thing you can do is just do the edge with the brush. Uh, I'm sorry, the sponge. Just take the sponge. It has to be a clean part of the sponge. And go along the edge and pull the edge off. And you get a, something like that. So these are all techniques that you can try on your own to finish it. And hopefully it gives you an idea of what this will look like. I'm going to just quickly... Put the color across the top. I mean quickly. I'm obviously going to redo this plate because 
when you paint this fast, it doesn't always work, and you really want it even. So I, I, when I made the study, I really took a lot of time with the plate. And I will do the same thing again, because this is a, can be a really beautiful plate. But just to give you an idea of what it will look like when it's done, let me just... Now, you can use this technique with a lot of things. You want the bottom of a vase to be dark. Um, you want um, a sol more solid background on things. You can, you can use this technique a lot of different times. And it's something that I often forget about. And so when I had this, I had the chance to do it. There we go. There we go. Let me turn it here. Use the clean side of the Q-tip. Okay, it's not perfect by any means, but it gives you an idea of what, oops, let me hold this plate right, what the plate will look like when it's done. And I thought the white background with the gray around, kind of gray-green around the edges, it's actually a black, a dark green, but I, it came out kind of gray-green. I think it's really stunning, and I think it looks really nice with this. Next. So thank you for joining me. I, I hope you enjoyed finishing up our chickadees, and I will see you again next week. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the program, and I hope that you will watch future programs by liking and subscribing to my page. If you do subscribe, I would really appreciate it so that other people who have a similar interest will be able to see more of this kind of programming. I have studies available at my website along with products. If you're interested in finding out more about those, please look at the description box below. Thank you.